Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to do a top to bottom walkthrough on the Zod Copilot Lite. I've been able to rack up some flight time on my Dart 250, which is supported by a Zod Copilot Lite, and I really like this flight computer. So today I'm going to show you how to wire it and how to configure it. The instructions are pretty good. There's a lot of visual examples and they kind of walk you through all the different steps and the lights and the wires and all the things that you need, but sometimes it's a little hard to follow because they don't really give you a path from A to Z. So I'm going to map that path out for you. Let's start out first by talking about the types of planes it supports. It supports a flying wing configuration, which are elevons. That's where you're mixing your aileron and elevator. It supports a V-tail. That's where you're mixing your elevator and your rudder. And it supports a standard T-tail, which is a more conventional airframe with a vertical stabilizer, a horizontal stabilizer, elevator, rudder, and ailerons. Importantly, when you're configuring these different configurations, you don't conduct any mixing in your plane at all. You just set up the four basic channels, aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. One thing I'll point out, super important to use the rudder configuration because one of the steps in calibrating the co-pilot involves rudder output. So even though you might have a plane like a flying wing that doesn't use a rudder, it's important to use the rudder configuration in your mixer because the co-pilot relies on that input. Let's take a look at the computer first. On the bottom, there's a pin header for a settings control board and PWM receiver. So if you're going to use a PWM receiver, you can plug it in here. Your settings control board goes here. I'll be using SBUS and that pin header is right there. So the SBUS receivers, they connect right there. And then you can see you've got pins for aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, and auxiliary in case you want to use auxiliary. And then on the other side, there's a connector for GPS. I like to use auxiliary when I'm on the bench to power the unit and that way I can use my other servo connectors for the actual devices on the plane that are required. This is the settings control board. One thing I'd like to explain on this before we get into the configuration itself is you'll notice there are three pots. There's a return to home and rad pot. What this does is allow you to select the behavior of the computer when return to home is selected. The rad mode is basically a fence mode, and the fence mode means the takeoff point is the center of a circle that ranges from 100 to 300 meters. That radius is determined from the pot's distance from zero. So the farther away from zero, the closer to 300, the closer to zero, the closer to 100 meters. I can't imagine using a fence mode when I've got return to home capabilities, so for my setup, I'm going to use return to home, and you enable that by turning this pot all the way clockwise until the stop. So just turn it all the way clockwise and you'll have return to home enabled. The other thing I want to show you about these potentiometers, and this is typical of this type of gyro or flight computer, is these pots have a position known as noon. So when you center that pot at noon, that noon point that I have that aileron on right now, that delineates the reverse for the servo. So if my pot is on this side of noon when I turn it counterclockwise, the servo will travel one direction and when it's on this side of zero or clockwise, the servo travels in the other direction. And that holds true for the aileron and the elevator. So the elevator right now is on the left-hand side of zero. If I turn this pot clockwise, it's now on the right-hand side of zero. That reverses that servo. One other thing about the setting board, you'll notice there's a little gold button there and you press that to do different things with the flight computer. We'll get into that when it's time to start setting the computer up. They also include a BN220 GPS. This particular model number does not include a compass, but for fixed wing, you just don't need it. The reason for that is because the heading can be determined by motion of an aircraft that's always going forward in flight. If this were a quadcopter, that'd be a different story, but this co-pilot is not designed for quadcopters. For my configuration, I'll be using a Fursky XSR S-Bus receiver. And after I get everything set up, I'm just gonna drape this down to the side because it's not really important for the configuration work that we're doing tonight. So I'll be moving this out of the way because I really wanna focus on the computer and the settings board. I also have a test servo that I'll be using. It doesn't really matter what type of servo you use for this, any servo will do. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. Before we get into the computer configuration, I'd like to show you my radio setup. On my mixes screen, you'll notice I only have two rates. I did copy this from my Dart 250, but I've made changes since the last time I shared this. So my new configuration on the Dart is two rates, one for when the stabilizer or return to home is on, 
and the other one for when I'm in manual mode. When I'm in the up position or the down position on the SE switch, I'm using this top line of 100% with no expo. And when I'm in the middle position on SE, that stabilizer off, I'm using this second row, which is 90% weight and 60% expo. When you have the gain set very low for the stabilized mode, which includes stabilizer and return to home, you just don't need much in terms of expo because the computer dampens the inputs for you. Now, when I'm in manual mode on that dart, that's a different story. That's a twitchy little plane, so I have a lot of expo in that case. Regarding the mixer, this is the most simple configuration ever. It's just a straight up 100% on the first four channels and a three position switch on channel number five. That's it. No modifiers, no adjustments, nothing. It's as simple as could be. Okay, so that's the radio configuration. Now let's get to wiring this thing up. One thing I'll point out before we start wiring is notice that the pinholes are closer to one side than the other. Pay close attention to that before you start plugging things in. The last thing you want to do is have that flipped and bend your pins. That would be bad. You can see on the GPS, the pins are aligned top of center. So I'm going to make sure I line up those holes to match. Just be careful about it and make sure you get it right. Because if you bend those, you're in real trouble unless you're a brain surgeon. Okay, so I'll plug in the pigtail to the GPS. And then we'll also plug in the pigtail to the settings board. Same deal. Just look at the holes and make sure you got the alignment correct before you plug things in. And that brings us to the co-pilot. So the setting board, by the way, the setting board does not need to stay with the plane. After you're done configuring everything, I'll show you how to lock your settings in. But once you've done that, you can remove the setting board. It does not have to stay on the plane. Although if you want to, you can. There's no reason that I've figured out that you can't leave it on there if you have the room for it. And if you want to, there's no harm in leaving it there. Okay, there's my settings connection. And then the GPS connection goes on the other side. Again, pay attention to the alignment on those pinholes. You don't want to get that wrong. Okay, those are pressed in nice and snug. The next thing I'll do is plug in my S-Bus receiver. And the S-Bus pin is right here on the far left-hand side. I have it upside down. See that arrow? That points to the front. So this is the left-hand side of the board. And the signal pin goes at the top. So I'll bring the signal right there and plug that into S-Bus. And there we go. The last bit to this bench setup is power. I'll be using my M8S supplied by a 3-cell 2200, and I've got a pigtail coming off the side. I'm just going to plug that into my aux port on the co-pilot, and you'll see everything light up like a Christmas tree. One other thing that's important is you do actually have to have a receiver bound and ready to work because the configuration depends on placing the co-pilot in certain modes at certain times. So make sure you have a receiver bound and connected and ready to work. Before we start the configuration, I want to point out a few things about the LEDs. You'll notice I've got a red blinking light over here. That's the GPS indicator telling me that I don't have a lock. When I do have a GPS lock, that light goes solid. I won't get a lock while we're inside though. I know that because I've done a lot of testing. This little round light right next to the settings port indicates the setting board is connected. And then there's two other lights in there that you can't see right now because I don't have the right mode set. But I do want to point out that the red one is inboard, the next light is LED 1, and the next light is LED 2. These two LEDs convey a lot of information while we set up the board, and I'll talk about them from time to time as we move through the configuration. Just remember, GPS on the left, LED 1 in the middle, LED 2 on the right. One more key point about the LEDs, when you have balance or stabilize mode on, in my case, one green light comes on because I have a T-tail. If I had a wing, both green lights would come on. When I'm in manual mode, the green light is off. And when I'm in return to home mode, the green light is blinking. Again, if I were in a V-tail or a flying wing, my green combination would match the V-tail or the flying wing. So if I had a flying wing, both green lights would be blinking. If I had a V-tail, only the inboard green light would be blinking. But the blinking tells you what the computer is doing. Right now, it's in return to home mode if I had a GPS lock. When I move my switch to the middle position, the stabilizer is completely off and it's in manual mode. And when I move my switch to the down position, that green light goes solid and that's stabilized mode. The first thing we'll do is set up the airframe type. We'll do that by entering stabilize mode. In my case, I'll push the switch down. And notice I've got a solid green LED. Now I'm going to long press the set button for five seconds. 1001, 2, 3, 4, 
five. I'll let go, and now I'll press the button again, and again, and again. And that towel goes through all the airframe types. So this airframe type is T-tail, that one is V-tail, and that one is a flying wing. So I'll go back to T-tail, and once I have the one I want, I'll long press the set button again. let go and you'll see the servo dance a little bit so as you can see i've got full aileron deflection on that servo now in stabilize mode the next thing i'd like to show you is how to reverse a servo on the stabilizer notice when i move my aileron stick to the right the arm on the servo moves to the right as well and when i rock the computer to my right the arm also goes to the right if i take my settings board now and flip that potentiometer to the other side of noon and go all the way to the seven o'clock position now when I move my stick to the right, that arm goes left. And when I roll the computer to my right, the arm also goes left. So that flips the servo for the stick and for the computer. The other thing I want to show you while we're touching the pots is gain. This is the big mystery. I get this one a lot and I've played with this a lot. But the gain is really something that's very important to get right on these computers because if you have too much gain on a small airframe, you're going to get what's known as oscillation and that is really not a lot of fun so in order to set the gain I just want to show you where we are right now I'm gonna rock the computer just a little bit about 40 degrees or so and I want you to look at the arm travel on that servo you see how far that arm is moving and I've got my pot all the way down at the 7 o'clock position right there so if I take that pot now and move it closer to noon but don't pass noon now watch what happens when I rock this flight computer you see how much less that arm moves? That's gain. And it's really important not to have your gains too crazy because if you do, that plane's gonna oscillate. It tries to correct and it overcorrects, and that's not good. It'll oscillate and it looks uncontrollable and it's just not a good situation. So what I recommend on the Copilot Lite, especially if you're using a small airframe to start with, is just start with a low gain. Don't get too crazy with it fly it, put it in return to home mode, and see if the airplane has enough to be able to turn the plane the way you want it. If it doesn't, you can always land the plane and give it a little bit more gain. But if it has too much, that's not fun. The stabilized mode is not fun like that. So it's better to start with a little too little gain and adjust up than the other way around. So on small airplanes like the Drift and the Dart, I'm gonna set my gains very low, very low. Now watch what happens when I tilt the computer now. When I tilt that computer, the arm moves, but it's not dramatic. In stabilized mode, the servo travel for your aileron is limited as well. You don't get the same amount of travel you do when you're in full manual mode. And remember, I have a weight of only 90 in my non-stabilized mode, so that's even reduced, and I still have quite a bit more travel. You see what I mean? That's why the weight on the radio being at 100 in the stabilized mode doesn't matter, because when you're in a stabilized mode, your travel is reduced quite a bit. And look at the expo in around the middle. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of expo in the middle. So the stabilizer definitely deadens that up for you. Okay, so we set our airframe type. We've done the work on the gains. You guys now know what gain is. You know how to set it. Keep it real low. Add more later if you want to, but don't start with a crazy gain value. Keep your gains relatively low. The next thing we'll do is a neutral calibration. The idea here is to tell the co-pilot what level is. This really needs to be done inside your plane, but since we're on the bench, I'm just gonna show you how to do it. But you wanna make sure you get the co-pilot mounted in your plane and get it level, and then perform this calibration in the plane. To perform a neutral calibration, power up the flight computer. Make sure again that it's level in your plane. After the computer is started up, we're gonna put it in stabilized mode. And this is the reason you need that rudder configuration in your mixer, because after the stabilized mode is entered, we're gonna pull the sticks down and in together for five seconds. When we do that, we're gonna see the LEDs and the GPS lights start to flash. After they stop flashing, we're gonna unplug power and that will set level for the computer. So again, make sure your computer is nice and level, put it in stabilized mode, and there's my stabilized light. Now we're gonna pull the sticks in and together and hold them there until the light flashes. There we go, flashing light. We let go. When it finishes flashing, we'll unplug it. There we go. Now we'll just unplug it. So far we've wired the co-pilot, we've set the airframe, we've set our gains, we've reversed servos, 
We've performed a neutral calibration. The last thing to do is a radio calibration. You do that by long pressing the set button for three seconds. When you're done, the servo will dance a couple of times on the aileron and that's it. When, the, when it stops dancing, your radio calibration is done and your gain settings are transmitted to the co-pilot. I'm going to show you a low gain setting and then a high gain setting just so we can confirm that our gain settings are transferred from the board to the computer and that we can disconnect the settings board and maintain our gains. The reason I'm going to take that extra step is because I didn't do this correctly on my first flight with the Zod Dart 250 and my gains were way too high. I had crazy oscillation so I want to make sure you see how to do it the right way. Okay notice my gains are pretty low right now. If I rock this co-pilot up to about 45 degrees that arm just doesn't move a whole lot. It just doesn't move a whole lot. I'm going to long press the settings button and hold it for a few seconds. The servos dance a couple of times and that's it. Now when I unplug this settings board, you can see the settings indicator light went out. And just to prove the point, I'm also going to turn off the co-pilot and then turn it back on. Okay, I'm still in stabilized mode. I'm gonna go ahead and rock the computer up to 45 degrees and you can see how much that arm is moving, right? It's not a whole lot. Now what I'm gonna do is plug my settings board back in. And I'm gonna turn my gain all the way up, all the way up. So I've set that aileron gain as far as it'll go. Now I'm gonna rock the board and watch that arm move. You see how far that arm is moving now? Basically going the full amount of travel. So now I'll press the set button for about four seconds. Now let go, we'll see the servo dance. And now I'm gonna take my settings board off. I'm gonna power the co-pilot down, power it back up. Okay, I've got movement on the servo. I'm going to go ahead and rock the co-pilot over on its side and look at that gain movement. You see how far that arm is moving? That's going all the way over. So now let's put it back to the final configuration where I want it. It's very important to make sure you get your gain where you want it. If you don't, you're not going to have a great flight experience. I just promise you that. So I'm going to set my gain down to something real low. I mean, I've got it real close to zero there. And you can see when I move the computer, how little that arm is moving now. That's a full 45 degrees and that arm definitely is not laying over. In fact, that's probably too little. Let me give it just a little more than that. Okay, so full 45 degrees and that's as far as that arm goes. Okay, now we'll long press the settings button. We'll count four seconds. 1001, two, three, four, let go. There's our servo dance. I'm gonna take this board off Unpower, repower. There we go. Now if I tilt that computer, that's it. Very small amount of gain right there. Very little. One last quick reminder, when you get a GPS lock outside, that blinking red light will turn solid red. I've had a blinking red the entire time because I just can't get a lock inside. But when you do have a GPS lock, that light goes solid red. And remember, when you are in stabilized mode, your LED is on solid. When you're in return to home mode, it blinks. And when you're in manual mode, it's off. And it looks like my airplane airframe type is not set correctly. I have LED number one and that's definitely a V-tail. So while we're at it, I'm just going to go ahead and switch it back. So I'll plug in my settings board. And remember, you get in there by long pressing and holding this for five seconds. Oh, you got to put it in stabilized mode first. So long press for five seconds. And then press it until you get the plane type you want. So I want that outboard lead or lead number two needs to be constant on for a T-tail. Yeah, that's the outboard light. Now I'm going to long press and hold it for about five seconds. When I let go, the servo should dance. My settings are now transferred to the computer. 
and I can disconnect the settings board. Okay, now I've got the right light set up. Important to get that. I must have missed it during one of the setup processes. I can't. I don't have a really good angle from the side here, so that's why it's kind of hard to see down in there. But yeah, I missed that. But yeah, that looks better. There's one last thing I'd like to show you, and that's fail safe. On the Copilot light, you set your receiver for no pulses. You can see I've got no pulses enabled on mine, and right now I'm in a stabilized mode. I've got that solid green light. I can go into manual mode. I can go into return to home mode, but I'm going to put it in manual mode. So let's just imagine I'm flying the plane and I lose my radio. Watch what happens. I'm going to turn the power off on my radio. It's going to complain that I still have a model. It's going to complain that I still have a model powered. So I'll hit enter and watch what happens. See how I immediately went into that flashing green mode? That's return to home. We've covered that several times tonight. Set your radio for no pulses and when the co-pilot detects no pulses, it goes into return to home mode. Now I'm going to turn my radio back on. As soon as I get a bind, it'll come out of that return to home mode. Switch warning. Stable. And there you go. The green light went out and I'm back in manual mode. I've got control over the plane. Okay, no pulses. That's what you want. No pulses. Hey, before you go, I want you to know that a full 60% of the people that watch my videos don't subscribe. It's really important for small channels like mine to get video placement when we have subscriber growth and when we have interaction with our videos. So hit that like button, leave a comment, check out my affiliate links in the description, and have a great night. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy.